Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, for round two video of the day, and the reason it's round two is I did a video and I went to check the mail and there was a gift. Uh, well, not a gift. I actually purchased a haul from uh, my go-to vintage fragrance shop, Enchante Perfumes. Uh, Anuj, I know I've given you a thousand shout outs on the channel, uh, but uh, you definitely deserve this one, buddy. This is an amazing haul. And there's a story in this at the very end, I'm going to save it for the end, that um, really highlights Anuja's, um honesty and trustworthiness. And um, the reason why I feel comfortable, you know, buying 10, 15 fragrances at a time from him, uh, which can get pricey, obviously. This hobby can become a little bit pricey. And, um, you know, if, if, if he was kind of taking advantage of people, there's no way I could collect this many fragrances, especially not this quality of fragrances and, you know, fragrances where I know have been taken care of. And if there is a problem, you know, I'm working with somebody that I trust and, um, you know, I, uh, I know that, um, he'll always do his best to make it right. And so Anuj, thank you, my friend. I hope you guys enjoy this haul video. Everyone likes a haul. Um, actually, you know what? I, um... I'm going to start with the minis, um, and let's start with the mini of uh, this, Fahrenheit by Dior in the 10 ml vintage um, version. Anuj has a ton of these, by the way. This is... Um, this is uh, some good marketing for him to try to sell these. He has an entire box. I saw it on the, the uh, stream that Eugene did while he was actually visiting on Shantae's shop. Go to Eugene's channel if you haven't watched it and um, pull up the on Shantae stream. And um, I think he sells these for $40 Canadian. Um, let's see if I can open this. Rich Mitch said he had to dig his teeth into the box like an animal because he just could not get it open. And I'm understanding why. Um, this is uh, this is kind of frustrating. Okay, here we go. Had to use my handy dandy unboxing knife. Uh, the world famous unboxing knife of the Ram. Okay, here we go. Get out of here, will you? He doesn't want to come out. Okay. There she blows. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Vintage Fahrenheit from, uh, what year is this? Does it say a year? I'm going to have to do some digging on this batch code. It's stamped into the box. 9178E Parfums Christian Dior 30 Avenue Hooch 75008 Parrot Patty. Maybe this is an 89. I really don't know. But, oh, that is so good. Oh, I'm going to decant this bad boy into a sprayer and wear the piss out of this. I love old Fahrenheit. I have a bottle from the 90s, but I think this is the um, earliest bottle that I have. And I think you can tell because of the Burning Planet box. So, Vintage Fahrenheit is the first mini, and um, the second mini is this. Chanel, whoops, let's get this rubber band off of here. Sorry about that. There are some rubber bands in this, by the way. This is the Eau de Toilette of number 22, which I did not own before this. This is a 19 mil bottle. Um... How about this? Compliments of Chanel. This is what they used to give away as freebies. Who would have thunk it? Um, I don't own number 22. Well, I do now. Oh, look at this. Sorry if I'm going to fawn over some of these. Some of these I've been wanting for a very long time. This is a very important haul, by the way. I hope you're as excited as I am. Um... Not for individual sale. Look at that. Oh, baby. Is that sexy or what? I've never smelled this before, ever. Never worn it, never smelled it. 
in the vintage eau de toilette. Oh God, my hands are shaking. Oh, 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 oh that is, I can't wait. I can't wait to wear this. Oh. Let's put you back in your tomb. Let's put you back in your box. Um, there are no ingredients on this box. That's how old this is. There's something on the bottom. But uh, I have no clue how you would date this. Uh, no idea. No idea. If anyone knows, let me know. Okay, those are the minis. So now we're gonna go on to a backup bottle. Uh, and this is a vintage splash of Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, my father's signature scent. I own one of these 60 ml bottles. This is the backup when they only used a couple ingredients. It does have a barcode, so it's not super old, uh, but it's old enough that it's one of the better formulas. and. I know it was properly stored, uh, and there she is. Look at that. Absolutely stunning bottle presentation. Stunning fragrance, to be honest with you. Oh. This is a fantastic fragrance. Um, it... Um, if you know anything about this fragrance, this came out in the early 70s. My father has basically been wearing this fragrance for as long as I've been alive. Uh, and it is has one of the most amazing rosemary and rosewood notes out there with this lovely lavender. Uh, it's a fougere. Uh, but the old bottles have this honey that comes out in the base that I just love with oak moss and musk and geranium. There's this cleanliness. It's a little bit soapy. Uh, the geranium gives off that soapiness. So Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Um, next is going to be, and I'm going to, I was so excited. I actually started this video before I pulled any of these up and I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the notes. So I'm going to take some time in between and just pull them up so I can at least have some of the info in front of me. Next is a vintage bottle of Bogart Signature. And you can tell it's a vintage bottle by the information on the back. Um, and I have a bottle of this. This is a 30 ml. I have a 100 ml. Newer formulation though. Uh, this is a, a 30 ml. Let's take her out, shall we? Let's take her out of the box and show you. Oh boy, am I going to be able to get this back in? There she is. There's the older bottle of Bogart Signature. I love this fragrance, actually. If you like, um, oh, if you like um, Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, these two are actually two peas in a pod. Um, this one came out a couple years later. Sometimes when I wear this, I think I actually enjoy Bogart Signature, which is nuts. And that's the modern version. So I can't wait to wear this vintage version. This is going to hopefully blow my mind. Spicy, green, there's some florals, there's lemon blossom. Uh, rosemary again, rosemary's awesome here. Geranium again, provincial lavender. Birch, cedarwood, Russian leather, juniper, clove, tree moss, and musk. Masculine to the core, my kind of fragrance. Um, Bogart's signature is one that often does not get talked about as much, but I think it's a fantastic fragrance. One of the best Bogart fragrances, in my opinion. Furio is my favorite, though. Furio is... Thomas from Early Greek said you could... Uh, what did he say? You could power the eastern seaboard for about a week with one 30 ml bottle of Furio. Okay, now let's go to... Oh, I can't, I'm so happy I have these babies. Um, we're going to go to a Shifra fragrance that I actually did a first impression of um, a couple months back. It blew me away. It 
you guys really believed me and bought this fragrance and um, a lot of people reported back how much they loved it and I'm glad you did and I'm glad I found some of these bottles. I have a 50 ml of the Eau de Toilette. These are two 25 ml of the Eau de Parfum of Teatro Alla Scala by Crizia. One of the best discoveries of last year. This is marketed towards women and I'll tell you what, um, Ramsey from five to ten years ago never would have given this fragrance a chance. I never would have given this fragrance a chance. And I would have missed out on one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled. Literally, one of the best. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait to try. I'm going to do a comparison video for you guys. I'm going to have the EDT and the EDP, and we're going to do a comparison. Um, so I have two of these 25 mLs. This fragrance is amazing. Um, if you like honey, like I like honey, the honey in Paco Rabanne is kind of in the background. The honey here is animalic. The civet is animalic. Um, the florals are big in your face. Teatro Alla Scala is um, a famous opera house in, Mil in uh, I can't remember the city, maybe Milan or one of the Italian cities. Um, and... It is uh, definitely like, um, you know, a orchestra singer who, um, an opera singer who could just carry a note on forever. It's big. It's loud. I love the, um, I love the um, powdery orris with florals and animalic notes. The, the civet in this is textbook civet. You know, this is how civet should be used. And um, I, I wore this for the first time a couple months ago and I went to the um, oil change place to change the oil on my wife's car. And there was a bunch of guys, I'm in Texas, there's a bunch of guys in cowboy boots uh, sitting in that place. And when I walked in, everything stopped. Everyone stopped and looked at me. Uh, this fragrance is absolutely stunning head turner uh i don't hype fragrances because i don't care these are discontinued anyways it's not like anyone's sending me free bottles i pay for all these with my own money but i'll tell you what some of these women fragrances this and another one coming later and probably number 22 from just that sniff i gave it are some of the most amazing fragrances i've ever smelled i love old masculine fragrances as you will see further but some of these women fragrances from the past completely have blown my mind. I mean, um, I probably would have laughed if you would have told me five or ten years ago that I would have been so excited about some of these women-marketed fragrances. And Teatro Alla Scala is a masterpiece. And I don't say that lightly. It is a absolute masterpiece. Um, so now I have 50 ml of the EDT and 50 ml of the EDP. Anuj, you are the man. Okay. Next, we are going to go to another backup bottle, and this is another 25 ml, but one of my favorite leather scents of all time. So again, we're going back in time to the year 1980. We're going to another discontinued fragrance. This is Leonard Porhomme, 25 ml bottle. Um, you can see the short ingredient list right there. Um, this fragrance... This fragrance right here, this is one of the best leather fragrances I've ever smelled. Discontinued, of course. So now I've got 75 ml of the stuff. Um, it's this very spicy, woody uh, leather with a big dose of castorium. This and uh, Antaeus from 80 and 81, textbook castorium. If this is textbook civet on the women's side, and I have textbook civet coming on the man's side here in just a second. If this is textbook civet on the women's side, this is textbook masculine castorium. And there's apparently a carrot note in here. This is just... <sighs> I mean, I haven't even sprayed it, and I can just smell the spicy castorium... Uh, leather just seeping through the atomizer. Absolutely stunning leather fragrance, and I'm so glad to have another 25 ml. The scent armory must be fortified, as Thomas would say. 
Okay, we're going to go to the house of Chanel again. And I think I got the last bottle that he had of this fragrance, but, you know, I'll leave the link for Enchante Perfumes in the description. If you're looking for something like this, hit up Anuj and see, because sometimes he finds stuff that he didn't know he had. And I'm so glad to have this fragrance. People, you go to Fragrantica and look this fragrance up, you will see people right now saying, oh my God, there's supply chain issues. I can't, I haven't been able to find this fragrance for a year. <sighs> Cristal, Eau de Parfum. Uh, specifically in the 125 ml splash bottle. Uh, let's open this, shall we? Oh, God. You guys have no idea how happy I am right now. Oh. Oh. Look at this beauty. Look at that. Oh, baby. Come to Papa. Can you see the batch code there? One, three, zero, four. I can't wait to wear this. I mean... I don't even know what to say. Um, I know that there is supposedly a um, cigarette, like a, uh, a smoke note. This is from 19, uh, this was put out in 1993. So I'm guessing that the fact that it's 1304 means this is a 2001 bottle, is my guess. So this is about 21 years old. Um, and this is a bergamot, lily of the valley, peach, lemon, and mandarin with hyacinth, iris, jasmine, Brazilian rosewood, oak moss, and vetiver. And apparently there's like a cigarette, like a smoke note to mix in with that green freshness. God, I just, I just want to decant this. I just want to decant this in number 22 and just wear them right now. Um, but I can't do first impressions on all these. It's just impossible. Uh, so... Oh, and by the way, there's a little Chanel Montreal on the wrapper. How about that? Um, good old Chanel Montreal. I'll never be able to get this back in. I'll never be able to get this back in. Nope, that's it. I give up. Um, okay, we'll come back. I'll come back to that later. Next is another Chanel. And this one actually does have the ingredient list on it. This is vintage number 19 in the Splash 50 ml with the short ingredient list. Oh God, this is turning into like perfume porn here, isn't it? But I am loving this. It's never been opened. I have half a mind to leave this sealed. Uh, the Cristal was opened. I have a vintage bottle of number tw of number 19 that I am working on, uh, and so I have half a mind to leave this sealed and just continue to work off of my vintage bottle of um, number 19, 80% volume. I can't. I, I just can't. It, it must be opened. It just must be opened. Uh, I have no self-control. Um, okay. There she is. Number 19 in the splash. Let's take a look at her, shall we? Ooh, I get a pamphlet. Okay. I get a pamphlet. We'll set the pamphlet aside for later. Oh, look at that. God, you're a beauty. How's that for a presentation, though? Freaking Chanel. 
eau de toilette is actually my preference. I prefer the eau de toilette. The galbanum. It's the galbanum, people. Um, the galbanum is insane in this fragrance. I'm going to decant this and see if it's the same as my uh, Recharge Vintage 19 that I have. Okay, so we're making progress, but we're nowhere near the end yet uh, because I have some unwrappings to do. And some of these are actually free gifts. Some of them I paid for. And I don't know what's what, so we're just going to jump in, and I'm going to use my little knife, hopefully not chop my fingers off, and give you guys a show. Get out of here. Oh, yes. I did pay for this one. Um, oh, yeah. This is Rocco Barocco for men. Rocco Barocco Eau de Toilette Pour Homme. And I have a... Oh, I love this fragrance. I have a um, 25 or 30 ml bottle. It's tall and skinny. And I've only worn it once. Uh, this and Joint by Rocco Barocco are my two favorite Rocco Barocco fragrances of all time. How many times can I say Rocco Barocco? Um, but I will tell you what, both of them are stunners. They're actually fairly similar, believe it or not. Um, they're not the same, obviously. Uh, this is not as animalic as Joint. Doesn't have as much honey and all that stuff, but it kind of goes in that masculine direction, which I love. Um, so, the scent armory is fortified, as Thomas would say. Uh, so that is Rocco Barocco. Next, and I know what this is, because there's only one bottle with this shape, with this absolute insane shape. Um, oh yeah, here it is. The original Giacomo de Giacomo in the shampoo bottle. Um with the beautiful Enchante sticker. There you go. You guys are interested in, everyone's like, is it Ashanti AS? No, it's Enchante, so there you go. Beautiful Enchante sticker. Rich Mitch says this is the worst sprayer in the history of fragrance. And um, I don't know if I can disagree with him yet because I haven't sprayed it, but uh, I will. I will spray this and I will do a comparison between the vintage and the new version, which I have and don't like. I don't like the new version. Um, so that is Giacomo de Giacomo by Giacomo. I got a little nice cap with it. How's that? Uh, okay. Now, this is a freebie, and I know what it is because I can see it through the... If you know what this is by staring at the shape, you're good. Uh, but this is a freebie from a Nuge, a partial. And, um, you know, it. I guess it is the spoils of putting a big order in. Um, I, obviously, I don't expect stuff like this, but... It's always appreciated, you know, when you get something like this. This has been on my radar for a long time. So either Anuj is um, a genius and, and a mind reader, uh, or he's been watching the streams, because I think I said, damn it, I want this fragrance and I can't find it, and I refuse to pay prices that are being offered, and here it is. Gucci Nobile. Whoops. Gucci Nobile. One of the best... Fougere, aromatic fougeres of all time. This was an old tester. Uh, I was not expecting this. So this is a pure surprise. Oh, I can smell it from the cap. Sometimes I just love a good aromatic fougere. And this is considered one of the best. Gucci, uh, Nobile. <sighs> pleasure. Absolute pleasure working with the Nuge. Um, 
So happy to have this. Thank you, mate. Seriously, you uh, you didn't have to do this. Someone probably would have paid you a hundred bucks for that. Uh, okay. Now, next is a, another women's fragrance that somebody told me I have to smell, I have to get my nose on, that it's amazing. And I think, um, I think it's a Dominique Ropion, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is it a Dominique Ropion? Yes, it is. It is a Dominique Ropion. 1984. This is the vintage of Givenchy Satis. And as you can see, it is the small ingredient list, which is what you want. Um, look at this. This comes entombed. Oh, what a beautiful bottle. Look at that. How's that for a presentation, eh? Look at that cat. Look at that stopper. Absolutely stunning. Um, 100 mil, 85% volume. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to have to take a sledgehammer to this. Ah, here we go. Wow. The florals in this are outstanding. Can't wait to put that on skin. Am I going to be able to get the stopper back in properly? <sighs> okay. I'll take that as a as a maybe, um, you stay in there. Don't let air get into my bottle, you. Okay, uh, Sadis, very happy to have that. And you know what, since it has that weird stopper, I'll put it back in the box for now. Uh, it's safer in here. Okay, basically that's aldehydes, uh, galbanum, Orange Blossom, Jasmine, Tuberose, Egyptian Rose, Narcissus, Ylang Ylang, Honey, Amber, Oak Moss, Clove, Musk, Patchouli, Sandalwood, Vanilla, Vetiver, Civet, Castorium, Bay Rum. So how's that for a note listing? Um, okay, now we're going to move on to a Kenzo. And um, this is the vintage version of Kenzo Jungle for women. Uh, this is also, I believe, a Dominique Ropion. Is it a Dominique Ropion? Kenzo Jungle, 1996. Yes, it is. It's a Dominique Ropion in Jean-Louis Suizak. How's that for a perfumer's duo? Um, and to make it even better, this is the small ingredient list. Thrilled, absolutely thrilled to have this. Um, this is an oriental fragrance, a spicy oriental fragrance with cardamom, mandarin orange, gardenia, heliotrope, clove, mango, patchouli, vanilla, ylang, and licorice. And um, look at that. Sticker of an elephant. How kind. And here we are. There she sits. I can smell it actually from here. Wow. Okay, there's the bottle. Look at the presentation they used to do on fragrances. Look what we've missed out on. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Wow. Never been sprayed, and I can smell it through the atomizer. It's, 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 I can't wait to wear this. Uh, Zhao says he absolutely loves this fragrance. Um, I won't even put it back in the box. That's going to get a full wear very soon. Okay, now, um, three left, and I'm going to do the one that I was going to save for last because I want to save the story that I wanted to tell you about. Um, 
Anuj and his uh, level of commitment to being 100% honest and transparent and doing the right thing. So let's do the one that I'm most excited about in this entire haul. Um, third to last. And here she is. Whoops. Here she is. Oh, God. You guys have no clue how happy I am to have this. This. Oh. This is a Charles of the Ritz Koros. I have hunted for this for longer than you know. Um, this is a proper unicorn. Uh, it even comes with a rope. It was obviously hanging somewhere on display. It, it was obviously a tester too. Um, and it's old and it was unsprayed. Anuj said that he sprayed it three times. Oh my God. <laughs> that is... I'm wearing this tomorrow. This is going to be my scent of the day tomorrow. Look at the stain from, from the civet on the, on the um, atomizer. Look at the stain. My God. <sighs> it's therapy. That is straight up aromatherapy. I love that smell. I can't wait to wear that fragrance. I cannot wait. Um, okay, we're going to do the creeds next. And the first creed we're going to do is the other women's fragrance, along with Tietra Alaskala, that I discovered in the last year or two, that completely blew me away to the point where I bought a backup bottle. And I have a 250 ml flacone, and I bought a uh, backup bottle, if that gives you any idea. And this is Creed Venezia. Now look at the old box of Creed. Look at this. Look at the um, shiny box. They went to this um, paper box later on, which I'll show you in just a second. Look at that. It's got this felt-like uh, feel on the sticker. And look at the back. And here is the... By the way, let me show you the card. Even the card is different. And I have a lot of creeds, but I don't think I've ever had a card that's laminated. This card is completely laminated. Which, um, if you know anything about the book The Ghost Perfumer, and you look at this, going back to 1760, it might make you chuckle a little bit if you believe that. <laughs> More than 200 years of experience. Um, okay, we'll let that sit. In 1760, in London, James Henry Creed founded the House of Creed. Okay, we'll let that just sit for a bit. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is this. I care about this. Look at the color of the juice. This is one of the most stunning fragrances I've ever gotten my nose on. This might be the best Creed. Oh, it's never been sprayed and I can smell it through the atomizer. This is, and by the way, how do they make a Creed cap that fits back then, but they couldn't make one recently? I don't understand that. Um, there's the... Um, little sticker they used to put on the bottom to tell you what it was. <laughs> um, so, Venezia. Um, Venezia, actually, I'll, I'll tell you this story first about Venezia. I r raved about it for a little bit on a video. And um, one of uh, my fragrance mates, Jonathan1970, Shout out to you, Jonathan. Went and bought this fragrance. Uh, and he reported back that it is one of the most amazing things he's ever smelled. Uh, and it is worth the hype. It is absolutely, positively worth the hype. Um, it's released for women. And 
The newer bottles of this do not come in this just standard Creed bottle. They come in the woman's bottle, which is kind of different shape, and it has the big Creed crest on the front. Uh, you'll, you'll know. If you go to Parfumo and pull up the fragrance, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, the juice color isn't as dark as these older bottles. This is not a complex fragrance, but what it misses out on or what it um, doesn't have in complexity it makes up for in the quality of the ingredients and the blend. The quality of the ingredients in this scent are some of the most amazing quality ingredients I've ever smelled. They go head to head with whoever. Name your favorite house. Frederick Mall, Roja, you know, just pick them. Um, head to head, 100%, top notch ingredients in this. This is very simple. It's bergamot in the top, Bulgarian rose in the mid, ambergris in the base and yes you smell ambergris and you even smell what smells like mysore sandalwood to me this smells like real mysore sandalwood um and vanilla and so if you think about that combo bergamot vanilla you get reminded a little bit of shalimar it's almost like shalimar done with the best quality ingredients you could possibly think of uh, and it is so beautiful. <sighs> so this is why I say to all you guys out there, uh, who are, you know, would say stuff like, I'll never wear women's fragrance or, you know, I only wear masculines or whatever it is. You are missing out on half. You're just cutting your fragrances down the middle and missing out on 50% of some of the most amazing fragrances that you could think of, you know, this is a women's fragrance. 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 So think about this. This haul is basically made up of women's fragrances and old school masculines. And um, if you're not willing to try these though, you're missing out, I'm telling you. And the other thing is the prices on some of these. So this old Koros, okay? Charles of the Ritz Old Koros is a unicorn. People are paying big money for it, okay? People are not paying big money for Tietra Alaskala yet. The prices haven't caught up yet. There is an opportunity. Now, I'm not saying buy it to make money, but if you're a collector like me, you won't be able to buy that in a couple of years if it's $250 for 20 ml. Um, but you can buy it now. God, old Koros. My God. My God. Um, okay, last one is the story. And the story, I hope you don't mind me telling this, Anuj, by the way. I guess I should have asked you first. Um, but that's all right. I'm going to tell you any, I'm going to tell it anyways, because I think it shows you in a fantastic light. Um, so the story is this. This is the final fragrance. And let me put this Venezia away. Come on, get back in your home. There you go. Okay, the final story is this. This is Silver Mountain Water, four ounce. Um, unsprayed, actually. But as soon as I got it, I took it out and I sniffed the atomizer. It's turned. Um, it has that nail polish remover smell, which um, the only other... Fragrance I've ever bought that's turned, by the way, is a Creed, Millicene Imperia. I've shown it on previous videos. I showed it on uh, my favorite citrus fragrance video, I think. And, um, you know, after the dry down, I sprayed this. You could maybe wear it if you could ignore the first hour. But that turn smell is there, right? So I hit up a Nuge and I said, hey man, the um, Silver Mountain water is turned. I'll pay for half of it if you'd like. I can, you know, I can cover it 50-50. I mean, you sent me freebies that, you know, you definitely didn't have to. Um, you sent me freebies that you definitely didn't have to. So I'll pay for half of it. We'll call it even. I'll pay for half. He said, no way, no how. This is business. Stuff happens. You know, it's, it's on me. And that's the kind of guy that Anuj is. And that's why um, it's good to do business with people like that. You know, you don't always run across people like that, honestly. 
And so it's, I don't think he ever sprayed this. It's brand new. He never thought to, to check it because it's never been sprayed. But sometimes citrus fragrances especially will turn the fastest. And so um, unfortunately, this four ounce of silver mountain water turned. Um, and so he said uh, he would decide whether he wanted me to send it back or not. And he said he'd pay the shipping if he wants to send it back. Um, so that's the kind of um, honesty that you would get working with someone like Anuj. And that's why I have no problem spending this, you know, getting these many fragrances in a haul from him. I hope you've enjoyed the haul. Everyone likes a good haul. Uh, you will see me wearing these over the next couple months because I'm going to wear them and test them and talk about them. Uh, and some of these I'm so excited to wear, especially this. This is going first. Old Coros tomorrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you've never smelled old Koros, you have to try to at least smell this once in your life. This is shockingly beautiful, even from the atomizer. I just want to spray it on right now. I don't even want to wear. I forgot even what I'm wearing today. It's so good. I literally have forgotten what I'm wearing today. Uh, I just want to wear Koros. I'm wearing Cartier. I'm wearing Santos to Cartier, and all I want to do is wear Coros. So there you go. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the haul. Some amazing discontinued fragrances here, but a word to the wise. Unless you're a serious collector, don't go mortgage your house to buy some of this stuff. Um, obviously, some of it's amazing, and, um, you know you should try to sample it, try to get some of these smaller bottles, these 25 mLs that are still cheap. Um, but um, you have to make connections in the industry. You have to get to know people and you have to, you know, prove yourself trustworthy that you're not going, you're going to do what you say you're going to do. You're going to pay on time. You're going to do all this and that. Um, and then as you collect, this is years and years and years worth of collecting. And now we're talking backup bottles and stuff like that. But um, I hope you've enjoyed the haul. I'll leave the Enchante Perfumes link down below. Best vintage fragrance shop I've ever come across. Um, and, uh, if you have experience with these videos, let me know. This is with these videos, with these fragrances, let me know. This is the second video of the day, but I had to do it. I had to, uh, do an unboxing for you guys. So cheers. Thank you very much for watching. And this time I'll definitely see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.